Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining me. Today I'm going to be showing you an open cup travel, or some people call these a flow, on a split color base. I'm working on an 18 by 24 inch canvas. I've envisioned this composition being in portrait orientation, but I'm going to show you guys the making of process in the landscape orientation because it'll give you a better view of what's going on. And I'll show you the portrait orientation at the end. The first base color is a mixture of ultramarine blue and black, roughly two-thirds ultramarine blue to one-third black. And the second is titanium white. We're going to lay down a thin layer of each and spread them out as evenly as possible. and torch the bubbles. For your travel, you'll want to find something cylindrical, about two to three inches tall, and around an inch and a quarter in diameter. I've seen people use uh, deep cookie cutters. You could use a piece of pipe. Today, I'll be using a little plastic tube that a bottle of nail polish came in, actually. Uh, you can also use a funnel, and a funnel might work well if you're new to open cup travels because it'll make it a little easier for you to control the amount of paint that's coming out. And I forgot to mention earlier on, but I like to leave a gap between my base colors of empty canvas. That way, when you place your travel, along the split colors, it'll help to minimize the amount of paint that ends up on the canvas. So that'll help you with preventing overspreading and issues like possibly cracking and crazing when your paint is drying. Now place your cylinder near one edge of the canvas and add a little bit of each color of your base around the bottom. This will help to make a seal so that your colors don't flow out as you're adding them to your cup. Check the description if you'd like to know the paint brands and mixing ratios. I'm using turquoise, silver, ultramarine, gold, metallic green, white, and a little bit of black for this pour. Go easy on the amount of black you use. If you use too much, it can easily take over. And layer these until you've filled your cup. You wanna be holding down your cylinder with a decent amount of pressure while you're filling it because the paint does have a tendency to want to start flowing out the bottom, especially as it gets more and more full. Okay, so here we go. This part takes a little bit of practice. 
you want to lift up just enough that your paint starts to flow out and it can just glide along the surface of the base layer. Now depending on the size of your cylinder, you probably won't have enough paint in it to get the whole way across your canvas. I made it about halfway. That's okay, just stop, push down again, and fill up your cup with the same layers like you did the first time. Now on the second half of the travel, I probably lifted a bit more than I should have right at the start. You can see I got a little bit more paint, but I'm just going to tilt the canvas to help it flow towards the opposite edge, help move some of that paint toward the other side of the canvas. Now I'm going to keep tilting because I've also noticed that there's more cells and interest in color happening towards the top and center of the canvas. So I'm tilting towards that bottom edge to uh, stretch that out and get more of the interest moving across the canvas. Now I'm torching to see if more cells might pop up in the travel. I didn't use any silicone for this pour. These cells are all created from the use of the metallics and Floetrol. Now I'm going to stretch out the paint a little bit more. Stretching your paint will also help more cells and colors to rise to the surface. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I don't see much of my gold coming through, but I'm liking the way the silver and the blues and green are looking. To make the composition look more unified, I want to soften the edges along the travel on both sides. And how I'm going to do this is by blowing out the edge. You can do this with a straw or by mouth or a combination. Whatever works for you. I'll speed this part up a bit so you don't get bored. Sometimes I like to do a little bit of swiping with my finger as well. This can help to blend some areas, also to bring a little bit of your background color towards the center. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with this and I'm gonna stop there. Let's flip it around. There we go and have a look at the final result. Thank you so much for painting with me today. I hope you enjoyed this one, and if you did, please take a second to like and subscribe. It means the world to small creators like me, and helps me be able to keep bringing you these tutorials. Hope to see you for next week's video!